Good morning and welcome back. We are on day 177 of our 365 day trek through the Bible. Uh, at the moment we're looking at ancient poetry in the Old Testament and particularly uh, at the moment we're beginning our look at Hebrew poetry outside of the book of Psalms. Today we are beginning that with the Song of Moses after the Exodus. Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 to 10. At which point Moses and the Israelites sang to Yahweh, I want to sing to Yahweh, because he has won a glorious victory. He has thrown the horses and their riders into the sea. Yahweh is my mighty protector, and he has saved me. He is my God, I want to praise him. He is my Father's God, and I want to sing about how great he is. Yahweh is a soldier, his name is Yahweh. He jettisoned the Egyptian army into the sea with its chariots. The top echelons of its officers drowned in the Red Sea. They were covered by the deep waters. They sank to the bottom like a stone. How awesome, how powerful your right hand is, Yahweh. Look at how it smashes the enemy to pieces. You defeat your enemies in a majestic triumph. When you get angry, they are consumed like blazing straw. You blew the sea and piled up the waters. It looked like a wall, and we could stand on the seabed. The enemy said, let's pursue them, let's catch them. Let's share their money and take their property. I'll draw my sword and take it all. But one breath from you, Yahweh, and the tsunami returned and drowned them all. They sank like lead in a dreadful deep. This is the major poem in the book of Exodus, and it describes how the Israelites escaped from Egypt during a tsunami. Back on day 73, I gave you a commentary on the Song of Miriam, which may well have been composed right then, as soon as their feet were back on dry land. Today's song, attributed to Moses, and incidentally also to everyone else present, um, will have taken a bit longer to think about and to work out. It will have been inserted into the Exodus story when it was ready. Maybe we can work out just when it will have been ready. Here I have only quoted the first half of it, the half relevant to the escape. The rest, verses... 11 to 18, betray its origin because we can see it makes only slightly veiled references, first uh, to the occupation of the Promised Land in verses 14 to 16, uh, which began 40 years later when they crossed the Jordan in about 1210 BC, and then to Jerusalem and the temple there in verse 17, which was built by Solomon a bit after 970 BC. Moses himself would not have known about these events in such detail, although he would have had a general hope based on God's promises of a future homeland for his people. Old stories had told of an elderly Moses who did see the promised land in the distance before he died, but he never entered it himself. We can be confident that someone wrote today's lyric for Moses sometime after 970 BC, and it may well have been composed as a song to be sung at Passover in the temple. We shall visit the elderly Moses again tomorrow. What remained in the folk memory, which this uh, poet cleverly picked up on, were two startling images. First, Something that many of us in modern times have seen on television uh, is the wall of water approaching as a tsunami comes in, swiftly covering the dry land, the dry seabed with the returning waters and rushing destructively inland. And secondly, the destruction, the overwhelming power of the waters sweeping away everything before them, including in this case the charioteers and the army officers of their pursuing enemy. Such startling sights become embedded in the people's consciousness, 
and these images are passed from age to age. They help people to know who they are and give them the pride of a people favoured by God. Well, tomorrow we are going to visit the elderly Moses as his life draws close to its end and how that was celebrated in verse. See you tomorrow.